I don't know what happened. I think I lost. Oh, it, is, it says it's still live streaming. Mm -hmm. So maybe it can you see it on Facebook still? Yeah. Yeah, I've done okay. it on. Cool. All right. Oh, people are saying hi. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi, everyone. To my parents. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Oh, hey, AJ. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, let's get started. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Julie Baldino. I am the owner of Front Door Realty. And today we are live with Amber Gastineau. And Amber is one of the newer agents on our team. Newer, but so smart and so ambitious. And she also takes the perfect selfie, by the way. Um, <laughs> Her face always looks perfect in every picture. And we're just going to um, hang on a second because I need to tell my husband to not do the dishes. Tony? <laughs> yeah. He, did you hear him? He goes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to get to know a little bit about Amber. So Amber, tell me why you decided to get your real estate license. Um, well, I have always found a lot of value in home ownership in general. It was a goal of mine to own a home as um, quickly as I can, as young as I can, because I think that's one of the biggest tools in building generational wealth and just wealth in general. Um, and then also uh, my aunt, who is the managing broker of Front Door Realty, I've watched her be an agent for, you know, a good portion of my life and see the kind of life and business that she's built and, um, you know, just helping people achieve those goals. Cool. Yeah. It's a, it's a great industry. And yeah, your, um, your aunt is a good success story for this industry because she was a single mom and raised four kids selling real estate, which I think is just such an awesome testament to how good of a job she did, but also her work ethic and how wonderfully successful that women can be in this business. So, and we'll drag her on here live. Uh, yeah, I soon. know she's nervous about it. But, you know, <laughs> I really, I, I also really like the fact that it, it really does seem like the more you put into it, the more you, you get out of it um, sort of thing. And it's yeah. limitless in that way. It totally is. It totally is. Like, your income is equivalent to your effort, mm -hmm. you know? So anyway, and then, so you, you were, how many homes had you owned prior to moving back here? One. Just, just your, okay. So why don't you tell us about your move to Arizona then and why you ended up back in the Northwest? Um, yeah. So we moved to Arizona, my husband and I, um, for his career, uh, to, um, jumpstart that. And we um, stayed there for about five years. That was kind of our goal. We always knew we would come back. Um, so five years was coming up and we found an opportunity to come back and we sure did. <laughs> and how happy are you to be here? Oh, so happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like I, I've been back since um, January of 2021. So not quite two years yet, but I'm still like not used to it in a way. Um, and I think it's kind of cool that I left because I can see just like the beauty everywhere. And I'm just like so in love with where I live. That's awesome. I am too. I have always said I'll never leave the Pacific Northwest because it's just the best of everything here, you mm -hmm. know? And I know that like other parts of the country ha are beautiful in their own ways, but here it's just so green and yeah, oceans I never, here, the mountains I here. I love the color green. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet. It's funny because when I fly, like I just flew back from Texas and when you fly over Texas, it's so brown, you know, and you, you realize how lush it is here. Mm -hmm. so, well, I'm glad you're back too. Yes. So. Um, okay. So then you bought your house here and you obviously, you weren't licensed then. So you used your aunt, Stephanie. So how did that experience shape the type of agent that you want to be? Um, 
Well, first off, she's very honest and especially, um, you know, being family too, she was not going to, you know, I was like, oh, I think I can see, you know, the possibilities here. And she's like, no, I mean, we're going to have to do this and this and this and this is kind of a mess. Like, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think taking the time to get to know people on a personal level, because everybody's so different and they want and need different things out of a home. So just um, sometimes being able to point out things that the client themselves are not able to see um, and helping opening their eyes to things too, I think is a really important aspect. So important. So important because a lot of times, especially buyers, they don't want to be told no like that, right? But they need us to be honest with them because they, they get caught up in this flurry of, you know, especially in the market we're just coming out of, everything is like this, you know, I've got to get something, you know, and you're, you're writing so many offers, you're just disappointed over and over again that you're willing to overlook things that normally you wouldn't overlook. So I think having somebody that is brutally honest, that can kind of bring you back to center and ground you in why you started in the first place is super important. And I mean, that has been my experience um, with both, um, you know, home buying, uh, you know, transactions, and then the sale of our first home when we moved back up here. Um, each each agent I experienced um, were different, obviously, but um, at the end of the day, I appreciated their honesty and, you know, walking me through everything and educating me on things that I wasn't aware of. That's actually really refreshing to hear because a lot of times when we are interviewing agents, we will ask them why they got their license. And Stephanie can attest to this. We're often told because I had a horrible experience buying a house. So yeah. I think that it's neat that you had a couple of good experiences buying prior to getting your license. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about what your, your, your group you have at home, because you've got some fur babies. I do, but I, but I see <laughs> pictures a lot. So tell me, yeah. tell me about them. Well, I have my dog, Chloe, and I have two cats, Echo and Stevie, we're brother and sister from the same litter, and they drive me crazy and are so funny all the time. <laughs> they and they're all approximately the same size. Like my, my dog's not that big. So it's just like three little furry animals causing a ruckus all the time. <laughs> Um, and you adopted your cats from a local shelter here, right? I did. I got them from Western Columbia Gorge Humane Society. Yeah, yeah they're great there, by the way. If you are looking for a cat or a dog, um, it's a good place to go. I was crazy. I actually brought them home the day we closed on our house up here. Oh, really? So, yeah, Stephanie brought me keys and I had kittens in my hand and they were oh, all... My God running around our empty house. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's too funny. New new house, new cats, same right, day. The timing, I mean, it was fine, but I would have maybe rather had a few more days, but they were available and I took the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Well, you know, that makes them resilient too, right? If they moved into an empty house because you did some work to your house, didn't you paint it and stuff? Um, No, not a whole lot. I painted a little bit. We painted our whole house in Arizona that we sold. Um, and I'm still a little bit burnt out from painting because we we did it all ourselves and painted like the entire interior of the home. And um, we had like some like 20 foot ceilings like in the opening areas really. We should have hired a professional, but we didn't. Well, you know, I mean, sometimes you appreciate it more when you've done the work yourself. Right. And we did and it, it also before saves we a lot of money. thought we were going to sell it, but, um, you know, so we did it for us, but then we ended up, um, needing to move. So it worked out that we had fresh new paint. Yeah. Yeah. Um, by the way, anybody that is watching, if you have a question for Amber, you're welcome to, um, post a comment and I'll, I'll ask her since I'm watching the feed just in case. Um, so here's one thing that I find really fun about you and your husband, because your husband and I, I see his Facebook posts a lot. You guys have got like really good taste in music. <laughs> like your husband, especially 
loves all the bands that I listened to when I was a teenager. And I know he's much younger than me, like much younger than me. So tell me where that comes from. Is that just because you listen to music with your parents or? Yeah, I mean, for me, I feel like I was raised excellently when it comes to music. I mean, I listen to everything and anything. Um, my favorite kind of music is the music I like. That's that's as uh, you know special as I can pare it down to. My husband, he just, I mean, he grew up listening to certain things, but definitely not like all of the rock alternative grunge stuff that he loves so much. He just fell into that. And um, we're both kind of like older souls that way. Um, and we really love it. Like every um, music that you use and song that you choose for your TikToks, I'm like, I love that song. It's such a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I was playing one the other day that I put, um, what, it was a Portishead song. Yes. That's the like, I was yeah. like, oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And Tony was watching. He's like, God, I love this song. <laughs> so it's funny. Yeah. Austin funny. loves Portishead too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I do I do a lot of like Lana Del Rey songs on them too. I like those, but yeah. And I'm a I'm a music buff as well. And I you know, I had my children when I was really young and I always had music playing, like in the car, in the house, everywhere. So consequently, my kids who are now in their their year age, um, they will listen to New Order and The Cure and then also like Stone Temple Pilots and nirvana i mean like it's just all across the board but they just appreciate the artistry of and we were not country fans in this house that's one that's one genre that i'm not into but everything else we listen to yeah there's not a ton of country but there is some that i like i can dig some of the old stuff like mm -hmm. really old stuff like keith yeah. whitley like bonnie Raitt, like some of that mm -hmm. older stuff but so anyway well, cool. Um, let me see. What else should we know about Amber? We know about your fur babies. Your husband, what does your husband do? Because I think his job is interesting too. Um, he is a pilot, so he flies planes. Uh, currently, he flies um, cargo. So mostly he's uh, moving a lot of Amazon packages. Oh, fun. yeah. <laughs> No, no, he's not like getting to fly to Hawaii or Rome or anything. He... No, not yet. Someday. Yeah. Okay. Not yet. I like Love that. those travel benefits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And then before you were in real estate, what what was your job? Like what experiences do you have before real estate? Do you think that'll be that will be helpful in this career? Um I mainly did like payroll human resources and accounting stuff so I think each of those things definitely I can pull from and are helpful um you know when people are buying a home it's a very it can be a very vulnerable situation where they have a lot of you know their income their taxes credits for um different types of things and you know I I'm used to dealing with that vulnerability on the side where I'm you know paying them and I know everything there is to know about that and if they have garnishments or creditors and things like that um and you know you have to be sensitive and and depending on um the situation too and be able to explain things in a way that people can understand um and then with the accounting thing I'm very analytical and like research driven so I definitely think that that helps totally um and then the human resources portion of it just dealing with all sorts of people yeah yeah and I think uh something that people don't understand about our job is that we have a fiduciary duty to confidentiality and when you know if you come from a profession where you're you're used to dealing with very very personal information it's automatic to keep it confidential you know and and actually now that you say that i was going to i wanted to bring up the training that most of the office is about to do because i think this is a really valuable skill set for you and for all of us in the office 
And, um, you know, since we've seen a little bit of a market shift, we've already gotten a couple of phone calls from people who are stuck in their house with little to no equity and need to move for personal or financial or whatever the reason is. And they don't have enough equity to pay the fees, pay the mortgage and move on. So um, I've been seeing it kind of coming for a long time, but now I'm witnessing it firsthand that we may be entering a market that's going to, we're going to see an increase in short sales. So um, Amber has decided along with Stephanie, I think Michelle, AJ, I think one of our admins is getting it, I already have it, a certification called the Certified Distressed Property Expert. And what that certification does is teaches us how to manage short sales. It's something I did, I think, back in 2000, I think it was 2009, I got it. And I managed a lot of short sales after that. I'm going to take the class again, just because I want a refresher since it's been you know, 10 years. But it, I think it's important to mention that that is one of the designations that you are going to be working on in preparation for a market shift potentially. So, and I, I also feel like helping people in situations like that is really in alignment with who we are as a company and kind of our hearts, you know, we're all very service oriented and service based. So. Anyway, wanted to mention that Amber would have that. In what, five weeks? Is, is the training five weeks long? Yes, yeah. Okay. So okay. yeah, so pretty much anybody in our office will be able to manage a short sale and you know, definitely call Amber if you, you're in a situation like that because this is like, for us, this is a judgment-free zone. You know, I mean, like you said, you've seen you know, people with <laughs> garnishments on their checks and stuff like that. Like it's it, for us, it, we don't even, we don't even judge it. You know, our job is to help people get out of it. So anyway, what, oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. I almost forgot. Amber is kind of a gardening buff. So, and she knows a lot of the, um, like, holistic uses for herbs and plants so when did like tell me how that interest started um I don't know really um I didn't like grow up with a lot of like gardeners in my life or um like herbalist or anything like that really I um it's kind of just like a natural affinity I think it just started with like me wanting to plant pretty flowers. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I guess I did deal with um, a lot of migraines um, from a very young age and was taking a lot of prescriptions um, for that. And I saw kind of just how quickly um, doctors were to just shove a different medication um, in my hand to try and not really help me solve the problem. Um, and, you know, I didn't want to be on a bunch of medication at 18 or 19 um, because I can't go to work daily because of my headaches. So that, I think, started me on the path of trying to, like, seek more natural remedies. And, you know, as I got more interested in gardening and they kind of go hand in hand with that. So I'm definitely not an expert, but um, it's it's something that, like, is fulfilling to me. And if I can deal with something on the more natural side, then I'd rather do that. Totally. So if you were going to add one thing to your diet, just for like overall wellness, whether it be like a tea or a tincture, what, what plant would it be? Um, probably like Garlic is huge, and oh, yeah. most people yeah. love garlic. And mm -hmm. um, oregano is just like one of those all-purpose sort of just wellness herbs that um, I don't think people realize like how beneficial it is for you. Like it can be antibacterial and um, just endless things. But the one thing that I will never be without is peppermint essential oil. I feel like you know 
you're going to have to rip that from my cold dead hands because I use it for everything. Do you use it for headaches, for your migraines? Yes. Yeah. What I else like do you, what else do you, in it. oh, I bet. Yeah. I've heard <laughs> that it was good for that. What else do you use for naturally for the migraines? Um, mostly a lot of peppermint. Um, and then some, I'm one of those where sometimes lavender can be like nauseating to people, but I love it. It's very soothing to me. Um, a lot of ginger and that sort of thing or like the nausea part of it. Yeah. Oh, I really, yeah. it's like peppermint oil all over my face, like ice and then peppermint or ginger tea is really kind of my standard concoction. <laughs> And then what this year did you grow in your garden? I saw pictures, but I didn't want you to tell everybody else. Um, so many things. It's the biggest garden I've had this year. Um, I put in one garden bed like weeks after I moved in last May because um, <laughs> I didn't want to miss out on the season. Um, and then I did another big bed this year. So um, I grew tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, green beans, uh, spaghetti squash, um, lots of flowers, strawberries, zucchini. Um, oh, potatoes. Those are fun. That's like digging for, you never know what they're going to look like. Um, <laughs> I've got beets, garlic, onions, lots of herbs, lots of and uh, lots of sunflowers primarily. Yeah, I liked your sunflowers. They were pretty. I kind of have a new sunflower obsession as of this year. I planted so many last year and I had one or two pop up. So I was really um, overzealous with planting them this year and they all came up. So oh, I'm wow. Sad. I had so many. Wow. I wonder what was different. It must have been weather. I, yeah, I, we will, um, I think with our spring being so like cold and wet for so long, I think that that definitely helped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, we planted some sunflowers too, but my husband thought we had to start them in these little pots with a grow light and make the little plants. I'm like, no, just take the seeds. Let's just yeah. plant them all over. Well, some things will are good come up that. that way. Yeah. 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 yeah, some some things are good for that, but other things, um, it's best to just plant them outside. Yeah. Throw them around. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I, th I mean, sunflowers are pretty hardy. I figured they would be fine. If you just overdo it, you'll probably get enough. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, what is your sun, moon, and rising sign? I am a Scorpio sun, a Pisces moon, and a Taurus rising. So there's a lot of crying in your house. <laughs> no, that's I'm, just not, I mean, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I lock it down. I think it is. I am very emotional, but um, it's like under the surface. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What is one really quirky, weird thing that I don't know about you? Um, I don't know. I feel like I I can be just kind of quirky in general. Um, <laughs> so it's hard to pick one thing. I don't know. Well, let, okay, kick that around. <laughs> I got another one for you. Okay. Buyers or sellers? Who do you think you prefer to work with? Um, I think the buyers because I just like I want everybody to own a house. So like lots of people. Um, you know, they, especially people around my age, they just don't think it's possible, mm -hmm. um, or just generationally in their families, they don't have a lot of people who own properties. So they don't think that they could ever do this. Um, and yeah, I think it's just really rewarding to, to be able to help out. Yeah, it's definitely super rewarding. I mean, I've worked with mostly sellers, especially like the last 10, 12 years. And they're, I mean, while that is rewarding in itself there's nothing like handing someone a key yeah. you know that has that it has never had their own place before mm -hmm. or doesn't even know what it feels like to have their parents own a place right mm -hmm. so yeah that that is really rewarding 
Okay. If you could have any car, money is no object, what would you pick? Well, growing up, I wanted a silver Range Rover and nothing more. Um, that, that was my dream car. Now I wouldn't want a silver one. I'd want a black one. Yeah. Do you want to buy one? Because I know, I know, I know one that might be for sale. Yeah, I know somebody that has one. (laughs) Because she might get a new one this year because she wants a white one. So yeah, Yeah. let me know. Yeah, I like um, like white or black or red cars, but mostly like white or black. Um, And then my other one would be a Tesla. Yeah, those are pretty cool looking. I um, have always liked those, but I can't fit three giant dogs in them. So they're a no-go. Yeah, I've got more compact, travel-friendly. You do. (laughs) You do. (laughs) Um, Okay. What is your favorite neighborhood in Clark County? Um, I do really like um, Fisher's Landing. But I also have sort of fell in love with like the Philida area now that I, I never really um, had reasons to go over there previously. I just haven't spent a lot of time over there before um, doing this job. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. but now I, I there's so much, um, so many little pockets that I just never knew existed that yeah. I love. That's a fun thing about this job is you end up exploring neighborhoods that you didn't even know were existed. And I ended up buying a house in a neighborhood that I had never seen before. And and I had been an agent for like 10 years when I bought this house. Mm. And I drove down the street. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I've never been down here. And then I ended up buying it. So, and everybody that comes here is like, God, I love this neighborhood. And nobody has ever seen it before. It's totally weird. It's quite, yeah, it's tucked away. It is. It's tucked away. It's not like super fancy or upscale. It's just so established and quiet and nobody ever comes down here. And I love that. Mm -hmm. And when you and Austin go out like on a date night, what do you guys like to do? And what's your favorite restaurant to go to? Um, We really like, we like pretty casual things. We don't like anything too uptight. Um, We like, like, um, like breweries and stuff like that. Um, go to McMinimins a lot. Um, and then the waterfront, just because we like the area so much, we like going there. It's a little fancier. Than that. That's, that's about as fancy as we're going to get. Mm-hmm. It's, <laughs> I don't it's cool down there. Have a dress code or anything, but um, I like trying, we like trying new things too. Mm-hmm. Anything that's kind of stale. We're like, I feel like we've been to the same places a lot. and I want to try something new. Yeah. What, um, what's your favorite restaurant down there on the waterfront? Um, I think, I think Twigs. Yeah, I like that restaurant. We yeah. went there, somebody, oh, I went there with a couple of friends a month or so ago. I think we went there on Mother's Day. It was really good. I like Wild Fin too, though. I haven't been to the other new ones down there. Yeah, I like wild. Yeah, there's definitely still a few that I haven't tried. The um, like stack. There's numbers. I don't know what the numbers are. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a burger place. Um, and that was really good, too. The yard looks good, too, if you want a monster milkshake. I, I went there. Um, my in-laws were in town visiting and we decided to go there. And yeah, it's insane. <laughs> Did you, what did you have there? Um, I got the cereal killer. Um, oh. <laughs> so it was like a uh, fruity pebbles, something with like I cereal all over and <laughs> lots of, they use a lot of like marshmallow stuff. I think that's a common theme they, to do all the different colors. That mm. they, Sounds healthy. Yeah. But you gotta <laughs> have it. It's like, crumble cookies like you have to try them you can't be like be like oh I can't eat those because but then again once you eat a crumble cookie it's hard to stop getting crumble cookies so yeah I can know I went there not too long ago um and we had like a quarter and I 
was done. Like it was just sugar overload. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I start to get kind of nauseous to get a headache if I overload too much on them, but they have one that tastes like waffles that has like, like maple flavored butter on top. Ridiculous. Yeah, that sounds really good. Like, ridiculously <laughs> good. So I don't even look at their website anymore. Cause I'm like, they have the waffle one. I'm going to order it and I just need to stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard to say no to those. So, um, okay. One question that I asked Chris that I forgot to ask Rachel, but I'm going to remember to ask you who, or what does your ideal client look like? Um, someone who is open and receptive to information. Um, I, they think they know everything and that can be very <laughs> difficult. <laughs> um, and if they think, you know, they're market experts because they see the headlines. Um, but I think, yeah, I, their attitude is the most important if they're just open and receptive. I like people who are, um, you know, laid back and kind. That's important to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't really have any. I think, I think one of the things that I've liked so much so far um, is that I've just met all sorts of people. So it's mm -hmm. hard to nail down like an ideal person because. I mean, the last few months of my life doing this, I haven't, ha I've had so many interesting conversations with so many different. That's so true. And, um, you know, and I did ask Rachel this, I just remembered because her response was, I, I don't really have one. They just have to be kind. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that is true. Like one of my very first clients, I still talk to, um, friends with a lot of my clients. So when like we talk in the office about keeping in touch with our clients. I'm just sitting back thinking like, well, I'm friends with all of them on Facebook. I talk to them all the time <laughs> because you do, you just meet people that you really jive with. And, and yeah, that, that is definitely a benefit of this job. So, so like Rachel, you just have to be not a jerk to work mm -hmm. with Amber. You know? Basically, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing about it is, is that even the nicest people in a real estate transaction get so stressed out. Mm -hmm. that sometimes they act like jerks and that's totally okay. Like we're able to absorb that. So if, you know, if anybody watching this happens to work with us later and you're being a jerk and you feel guilty, it's okay. We already, we forgive you automatically. So We'll talk you down. Well, yeah, we'll talk let, you down. Let you get your feelings out. <laughs> yes, we'll talk you down and we won't hold it against you later, we promise. So mm -hmm. is there anything else in closing that you want people to know about you? Um, I don't think so. I'm just uh, excited to help as many people as I can. That's yeah. my goal. Yeah, me too. That's what I love about this job. It's very rewarding. And I have to say that when I told everybody that we were going to do these live interviews, everyone was so nervous. So I want to say that I'm really proud of you, Amber, for, for jumping in <laughs> and agreeing to do it. She was like, I'll do it. I just don't want to go first. So yes. <laughs> we all made Chris go first and he, he lived through it. And I think everybody was like, okay, we can do this. And then Rachel chimed in and then Amber. So we're going to have to drag Stephanie to the table, kicking and screaming, but we'll get her on. Yeah. And I think AJ's next week and he loves being the center of attention. Oh yeah. Well, he'll be the superstar. <laughs> getting AJ on here, but, um, but thank you for doing this with me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And I will probably see you in the next couple of days. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Bye.